Getting started with Perfect Photo Suite 8 has never been easier. With the all new Browse module, we make finding your images faster and easier than ever before. Your images no longer need to be in a dedicated catalog. Down the left hand side, you can navigate to popular online storage devices, your hard drives, and even favorites. I can come up here, click on the plus button, and add a favorite from the desktop or wherever the location is and easily get to my images in no time. When I click on an image in the browse module, in the upper left hand corner you'll see under the info pane metadata about the image. You can see what camera it was shot with, what lens was used, my ISO. I can even see the color space, the image size. Great metadata for making finding your images or originals even easier. Let's click in the portrait category and I can grab an image, right click on it now directly from the browse module. So I've got a couple ways that I can go and launch into the different modules of Suite 8. We can do that through the right click or I can come up here to the upper right hand corner and click on any of the tabs to launch into the modules we want to go into. Let's go down here, let's right click on this image and let's start in layers. So here it's going to ask me if I want to edit a copy, edit the original or add as a layer. My preferred workflow is to always edit a copy that way I can easily get back to my original image. Here under the copy options you have the ability to choose the different file types. So if you want to work with a TIFF file you can select that under the file format. Note that working with TIFFs does not support layers. I recommend working with the default PSD file format that way you have maximum flexibility. You can also choose different color spaces and you can choose bit depth from 8 or 16 bit as well as file resolution when you go to open that image up. So here I'll click OK. I'm all about learning keyboard shortcuts. Really speeds up your workflow. So if I tap the Z key that puts me in the zoom tool. Let's zoom in on this image. I'm going to start using the brand new tool, the perfect eraser. Tap the Q key to get quickly into that. So here we're going to use that new content aware technology and I'm going to use it to just remove the small ornament off the forehead and I can use it to also spot out blemishes. This is a great tool for removing those unwanted elements. I know there's some loose threads down here that I'm going to use also this perfect eraser to remove that as well and you can see what a great job this does. Zoom in a little more here and I'm going to lower my brush size just a bit. You see right as we paint over that just like that we can make that just disappear. Next let's use that retouch brush to smooth out a little bit of the skin. The keyboard shortcut is the letter R that puts me in the retouch brush and the beauty of the retouch brush is that I can lower the opacity a bit so I can preserve some of the skin detail and make it look a little more subtle. So here as I paint over this you see how we're uh, removing it but not completely removing it. It shows a little bit of that detail uh, that does a better job sometimes than using the perfect eraser. So this is a great way uh, to remove softened lines on the face without them completely going away. I like using it to remove the dark lines under the eyes. Uh, using it with that lowered opacity creates just a beautiful portrait there. So you can see how we paint over it. Rather than it having it completely disappear, it just softens that up. Let's do a little more on the forehead here really quickly. We'll just paint right over this and you see how we can just kind of minimize some of those lines just a bit. For repeating patterns you're going to want to use the clone stamp tool. Really powerful tool. Let's zoom out. I'm going to press command zero and again if you're on the PC press control zero and if I press S, S is in Sam, that puts me in the clone stamp. Let's tap Z to get into the zoom tool and then I can just drag over the area I want to concentrate on. Uh, tap S to go back into that clone stamp and this is great for repeating patterns. So here along the neck I want to extend the necklace to the back there. So holding down the option key I'm going to set my sample point. On the PC you're going to hold down the alt key. 
So here I can set that and you can see we're duplicating that and now I can just paint right down along that edge. What a great job that does extending the line. Again, I can sample patterns here. So if I want this, and I can also increase my brush size. And you see how after you set your sample point, it just duplicates, gives you an idea of what it's going to look like as you paint. So here, let's extend this out just a bit. Come back up over just like that. Look at that. Let's zoom back out. And you can see how we've just added some extra necklace to the neck. Next, let's add a texture overlay to this image. So here, when we're in layers, just click into the extras category, come down here to on one extras. This is where we've added backgrounds, borders, additional textures. I wanna do a texture overlay. So I'm gonna go into our textures category and I'm going to go into the walls here and see what we've got for some great backgrounds to add. I like this warm composite. So I'm just gonna double click on that it's going to pop up a window that asks me if I want to edit it as a copy, the original. Here, I want to add it as a layer, so I choose Add as Layer. And that's going to place that right over my image. So there's the original, and here's with that new background texture we're going to use. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the blending mode. So here, I can change the blending mode, and you'll see what happens as we do this. We get different previews here. I'm going to come down here to Overlay. I like the look that's going on here, but I don't like the texture over the face and the skin. Everything else looks okay to me. What I'm going to do is we're going to go into the masking brush. So I'm going to tap the letter B as in boy, great keyboard shortcut. And what I'm going to do is also lower the opacity a bit. So I'm not going to completely remove the texture in one swipe, but it allows me to subtly remove that from the face or any area that I don't want the texture to be on. So here, I can paint over just like that. Let's remove it here. And here you see how easy it is to add and remove textures to your images. Next, let's merge these together. And I'm going to click on the merge layers here. And that's going to combine both of those image layers into one layer. And now I can click on effects and add some new filters. So here we are in effects. We've got brand new tools, brand new filters that give you a lot more control than the previous version. So here I'm gonna click on our new adjustment brush. Here it automatically adds the filter and then gives me full control under the filter options here on what I want to paint in. So here I'm gonna select detail and I'm gonna pump up the amount here a bit. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Now, painting over the jewelry, you see how we just give it some extra snap there. I'm gonna come down the edges of the dress here and really make the detail. This is a very ornate dress and you see how we can just really make this pop. So anywhere that I want to paint in detail, uh, I can do this. Add a little right here, just to those areas. Very selective. Let's add another adjustment brush. So here I'm going to click on the plus minus brush. It's going to add another filter to the stack. This time I'm going to use the light and preset and I'm gonna use it to lighten the eyes. With the perfect brush enabled, this keeps me in the areas where I only wanna lighten without having to worry about where my brush is. So here I can just paint right over those eyes and just lighten up those areas just a bit. If I wanna add another filter, I can click the plus button here. So this adds a new empty layer to the filter stack, allowing me to stack up another filter. Let's zoom out, so I'm going to press Command-0 to fit it to the screen. And then I'm going to go to the Vignette category over here. And I can expand that. And if I click on Big Softy, this is one of my favorites, I get a nice vignette. But one of the cool new features is we have under the filter options here 
is the new vignette placement tool. So now I can offset the vignette to exactly where I want it. And I have full control over the size, the feather of that. You see how we just really dial in your attention to the subject matter. So now when I click apply, it will return me back to layers. And here you can see the new perfect effects layer. And here was that original image that we were working in in layers where we added that texture overlay and where we use the new tools like the perfect eraser, the retouch brush, and the clone stamp peeling. So here you can see the difference just by using perfect effects. And now when I click close, it'll ask me if I want to save it. It will save it. And you'll see it now. If we jump back over to the browse module, you'll see it stacked right back with that original image. So there's the creative edit. And there was our original image. And back to the creative edit. You see how easy it is to streamline your workflow using the new Perfect Photo Suite 8.